It's so nice to be here with you today. So nice to be here with you to pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Won't you please, won't you please, please, won't you pray for your neighbor? Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's episode of Father Ralph's Neighborhood. I'm Father Ralph Zwern, and thank you for finding your way into my neighborhood. Please be sure to subscribe if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our episodes as they're produced. Uh, we're beginning to get back to a more normal uh, schedule, although I really would like to have these out earlier than Wednesday, but Wednesday's earlier than Friday was, right? So it gives us a chance to reflect on the gospel of the previous Sunday, which was the fifth Sunday of Easter. Wow. Time is going so fast. Our gospel this weekend was the gospel of St. John. And we're reading from chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to my Father. the Gospel of our Lord. So I'm having a little issue here. I want to make sure that this goes the way it's supposed to go. We'll just have to keep our eye on it, I guess. Trying something new with the music and I think it's working, I think. We'll see what happens. So, uh, this is 
a gospel that I practically have committed to memory because we use it uh, at funeral masses. And it's the gospel, as you just heard, where Jesus promises that he's prepared a place for us in his heavenly kingdom. Now, I don't know how you envision heaven, if you even have a strong vision of heaven. But uh, I had a dream. Now, you know, there are dreams and there are dreams, right? Uh, there are dreams that you have that you know when you wake up that was a dream. And in fact, you might even say to yourself, boy, what a goofy dream. Probably one of the goofiest dreams uh, I have had. Uh, no offense to Telly Savalas, but I dreamt that I spent the night chasing down crooks with him as Kojak. Uh, what made this dream so unbelievable was that I really never watched Kojak. Maybe an episode here and there, but never really watched the show. So why should I dream about being with Kojak all night? When I woke up, I'm like, that was a weird dream. But then there are other dreams that are like very, very real. And uh, you wake up from the dream and you say to yourself, wow, was that a dream? Uh, was I dreaming? Or, or what was going on? And uh, I had a dream. And in my dream, I woke up in a very, very comfortable bed in my favorite cabin that I used to vacation in Rocky Reef, Wisconsin, the north woods of Wisconsin, Boulder Junction, Trout Lake. Uh, it was my favorite cabin, primarily because it had a screened-in front porch, and uh, that porch faced the sunset. So every night I would be able to go and, and uh, uh, I would be able to just sit on the porch and enjoy watching the sunset. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, cabin. So here I am. I wake up in bed. As I said, a very nice, comfortable feather bed in my favorite cabin in Rocky Reef. And as I kind of you know, wake up, sit on the edge of the bed, there on the floor next to me is the cutest little dog. It wasn't my Wiley, uh, uh, but it was a dog. And one of the things I, I'll tell you, I, I love dogs. And what a nice thing to wake up to in the morning to see the dog tail thumping on the floor, his cute little eyes looking up at me. And uh, then I look over to the uh, wall, and there's a spinet organ. Now, I play the theater organ, and I have a beautiful a three-manual Allen theater organ, but that wasn't the organ in my dream. The organ in my dream was just this nice little spinet organ. And I was like, well, that's nice. I, while I'm up here, while I'm up here on vacation is what I'm thinking in my dream, I'll be able to play the organ. And as I'm looking a little bit more closely at the organ, knock on the front door. And I was like, okay. So I get up and uh, I go to the front door and there's this really handsome young man at the door uh, he appeared to be uh, an Italian, and I say that uh, because he had the, the silk shirt uh, uh, unbuttoned down, and he was also wearing a uh, Mr. T starter set, 
uh, gold jewelry. Uh, and I'm looking and said, can I help you? And it's this big smile on his face. He says, I'm your Uncle Ralph. Now, I was named after my Uncle Ralph. And my Uncle Ralph was named after my grandfather, Charles, his brother, Ralph. Well, my Uncle Ralph was struck and killed by a student driver as he was crossing the street for Penny Candy uh, at 31st in Princeton. So he was only five years old. By the way, if you hear 31st in Princeton uh, and you say, hey, we have family there or we were probably related. Everyone I know who, who used to live at 31st, they were somehow were cousins or something. So I'm thinking, but Uncle Ralph, you were only five years old, you know? He says, yes, this is heaven for me. I'm here now uh, as, as the adult that I never had a chance to be uh, because of the accident, but here I am now, and I am uh, full grown and, and dashingly handsome, and wow, okay. And I said, what do you mean this is heaven for you? He says, well, Ralph, this is heaven for you. And I thought back to Sister Mary Peter Thomas, who, you know, one of us kids as we were preparing for First Holy Communion, asked her, what's heaven going to be like? And Sister told us, well, everything that you need to be happy for all of eternity will be there. And then it just dawned on me, my goodness, my favorite cabin, a doggy, spinet organ and before I could kind of cogitate everything that was happening let's go for a walk and so go out the front door of the cabin and oh gorgeous woods beautiful path walking toward the lake and then I woke up and I woke up but I woke up like did that really happen? Was I really there? Was that really Uncle Ralph? So I told a few of my closest friends about my dream. And they said, isn't that beautiful? God gave you a little glimpse to what he has prepared for you in heaven. And one of my friends got very animated, very excited. Call your doctor. I said, why should I call my doctor? I'm not losing my mind. No, no, no. You dreamed about being dead. You've got to call your doctor and make sure you're okay. Well, because of my diabetes, I go to the doctor regularly. So that was not a concern of mine. But it's interesting that I had that dream. So you may think I need to see a doctor, <laughs> but I tell you, ever since I had that dream, I know that our Lord has prepared a place for me. And I know that this life is not all that there is. And I know that when the time comes, I'll be there. I'll be there with my Uncle Ralph, with Mommy and Daddy and Mamo and Grandpa, Grandma Ella, Uncle Grandpa Chris, uh, with uh, Uncle Matt, Uncle Ralph, you know, uh, Uncle Rich. I, the list goes on and on because these are the people that I know are in heaven. And I know that I will need to be with them if I am going to be happy forever. So this gospel is a gospel of promise, a gospel of hope, a gospel where Jesus tells us without a doubt, without a doubt, 
I have prepared a place for you. And I am coming back to take you with me that where I am, you also may be. And he says in this gospel, you know the way that leads to where I'm going. And that should give us great comfort too, because do we really, do we really know the way? One of my all time favorite jokes is about the, the bishop lived a long, rich, holy life uh, he, he dedicated himself to his people, to his priests. Uh, he, he did everything he possibly could as a bishop taking care of his people. So he passes away and St. Peter brings him to his house in heaven. And interestingly enough, uh, in the joke, it's a cottage. You know, it's just a little beautiful little cottage. And the bishop notices immediately that his next door neighbor is living in this huge mansion. Swimming pool, uh, music playing, and people having a great time. And uh, he says, St. Peter, forgive me for asking, but who lives in that mansion? And St. Peter says, you remember Joe? Joe, the taxi driver, you rode with him several times. That's his house. And the bishop is like, wait a, wait, wait a minute. I'm, I'm a bishop, and I spent my life teaching the gospel. And I live in a little cottage, but Joe, the taxi driver, he lives in a mansion? And St. Peter smiled at the bishop and said, Bishop, here in heaven, we reward results. And while people were falling asleep in their pews during your sermons, people in the back seat of Joe's taxi cab were praying like crazy. <laughs> so yeah, who knows? I know, because I had a dream. I hope you, you can you can have that same confidence. Maybe, maybe you, you don't know specifically what heaven is going to be like for you, uh, but think about what Sister Mary Peter Thomas said. Everything is going to be there that you need to be happy for all eternity. You might even, for your homework, want to make a list. What do I need? What would I need? to be happy for all eternity. Who would I need to have there with me? Um, and uh, I tell you, I, I think back to my vacations in, in the North Woods and never missed, never missed a sunset on that beautiful porch. Yeah, I could live with that for eternity. I could, I, I'd love to get to know my Uncle Ralph, never, of course, never knew him. I, 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 there's all kinds of things that I hope I'm going to have when the time comes. And you find your way there, as that little joke kind of made light of, but it's true. In our prayer, if we devote our lives to prayer, if we pray knowing that God has prepared this place for us and that he has promised that he will come back to take us with him so that where he is, we also may be. That's what Easter is celebrating. Not just the resurrection of our Lord, but the promise of the resurrection that our Lord has given uh, to each of us. So, hey, Make yourself a cup of hot cocoa, if that's your thing. Uh, sit and close your eyes and imagine what would heaven be like for you. And I hope that maybe God will give you the same gift he gave me. Give you a real dream 
a dream that you wake up and you say, wow, I was really there. I know, I know what is waiting for me in heaven. Good Lord willing, and the Crick Don't Rise will be with you again next week for our Mother's Day episode of Father Ralph's Neighborhood. Until then, we pray that the angels will watch over you and all those you love, that they will protect you, guard you, guide you in all of your ways. We pray that the Lord will send his most Holy Spirit, that you may be filled with hope in the promise of the resurrection, that you may know with all of your heart this life is not all that there is that our Lord has prepared a place for us in his heavenly kingdom. May our Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.